All right, so this PowerPoint presentation will be used to describe the history and theory behind phonemic awareness, as well as address a long-term goal that can be associated with phonemic awareness in the classroom. The long-term goal that will be addressed with the strategy suggestions later on in this presentation is to foster awareness of students' phonemic awareness abilities and their understanding of the alphabetic system. To go along with that long-term goal, the instructional goal is to develop the student's ability to identify initial, medial, and final phonemes in high-frequency grade-appropriate words. So a majority of the information discussed on this slide comes from the Reading Rockets article that is cited on the last slide of this PowerPoint. Phonemic awareness is the understanding that speech is made up of a series of individual sounds. Students need to understand how the sounds in words work for many important reasons related to their literacy development. Phonemic awareness tasks should only include the sounds in the words that the students are working with. According to an article by Yap in 1992 about developing phonemic awareness in young children, Phonemic awareness tasks demand that children analyze or manipulate the units of speech rather than focus on meaning. Students need to understand that words are made up of individual speech sounds or phonemes. Phonemic awareness skills and phonological skills are a strong predictor of students' later success in reading. The ability to notice, think about, and work with the individual sounds in words is important for students to know. Along with all of that, phonemic awareness also includes manipulating the sounds and words, and that can include blending or stretching sounds. According to the same article from Reading Rockets, students can demonstrate phonemic awareness in multiple ways by recognizing which words in the set of words begin with the same sound, isolating or saying the first sound, the first or last sound in a word, both of which are connected to the instructional goal for this PowerPoint. Combining or blending the separate sounds in a word to say the word also counts with phonemic awareness and breaking or segmenting a word into its separate sounds is also important for students to know. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the history that goes along with phonemic awareness. So in 1987, it was published by McLean Bryant and Bradley that most children are able to complete rhyming and alliteration tasks by the age of five, and some can even do it as early as age three. And this information was found in the Phonics A to Z book by Blevins. Also according to Phonics A to Z by Blevins, in 1990, Adams describes the five basic types of phonemic awareness tasks or abilities. Task one is rhyme and alliteration, Task two is oddity tasks or phoneme categorization. Task three is oral blending. Task four is oral segmentation, which includes counting sounds. And task five is phoneme manipulation. So that could be substitution, deletion, or blend deletion. A study done in 1989 by Shankweller and Lieberman found that 20% of children lack phonemic awareness, which has, a large, has large implications on their reading ability later on in life. So they may have struggles later on. 20% of children may have struggles later on with their reading. In 1992, Yap explains that there are two different concepts involving the relationship between reading and phonemic awareness. The first is that phonemic awareness is a consequence of reading and the second is that phonemic awareness is a requirement for learning to read. There is evidence to support both of these ideas, so it can be said that there is a reciprocal relationship between learning to read and between, between learning to read and phonemic awareness. In order for students to begin their formal reading instruction, they need to have some level of phonemic awareness, but as they develop and strengthen their reading abilities, they will strengthen their phonemic awareness. Yap also says that research has shown explicit phonemic awareness instruction is best for increasing reading and spelling achievement. According to Phonics A to Z by Blevins in 1995, Eldridge explains that phon phonological awareness includes words within sentences, rhyming units with within words, beginning and ending sounds within words, syllables within words, phonemes within words, which is phonemic awareness, and the difference the different features of phonemes. 
Also according to the same text, Ye and Connell in 2008 and Rutzel in 2015 stated that it is best to focus early instruction on blending, segmenting, and manipulating phonemes. While rhyme and alliteration activities are abundant and very fun for students, the instructional benefit is not as strong as compared to working with words at the sound level as you do with blending, segmenting, and manipulating phonemes. Two theories that I have chosen to highlight that can relate to phonemic awareness are social learning and emergent literacy. So social learning was brought forth by Albert Bandura and the name of the theory was recently changed to social cognitive theory. This is a combination of behaviorism and social learning theory. So social learning theory says that vicarious learning is best learning from observing other people learning with around with and around other people. Bander argued that people learn more from observation than they do from actually experiencing for themselves. By learning through observation, people are spared from learning everything through personally experiencing it. They are able to see other people experience it and learn from those encounters. There are four stages to observational learning, the attention phase, the retention phase, the re reproduction phase, and the reinforcement phase. Social learning theory also allows students to focus on self-efficacy in learning and they must, so children are believing that they can learn something in order to learn it. When related to phonemic awareness, students should be learning phonemic awareness as a whole class or in small groups with peers so that they can learn the sounds through the other students. They can learn by working with their peers and working together on a common topic. So this is also mentioned in the article that is in the um, references slide by YAP where um, they explained that it is said that students should hear the classmates while working with phonemic awareness skills because they can learn through those experiences as well as practicing the skills themselves. So they can hear this, their fellow classmates saying different words, saying the sounds, changing the sounds, and they'll also understand that that is important and they need to understand what to do with those sounds. Um, another theory that's very important for phonemic awareness is emergent literacy, which was started by Marie Clay. And this is the period in a child's life between birth and their ability to read and write at a conventional level. So between birth and usually third grade. Children's development in the areas of listening, speaking, reading, and writing are all interrelated. This theory says that literacy development starts at birth and is continuous and ongoing. It also says that the home environment plays a huge role in this theory, as it says their literacy development starts from the time that they are born. This theory focuses on early learning in the student's life, which is the time when they should be working with phonemic awareness skills. If you start a student with phonemic awareness skills early on before they start reading, it will help them to be successful with their literacy skills later on. The rest of this PowerPoint will be used to describe different strategies and activities that can be done in the classroom to address the instructional goal of initial medial and ending sounds. Developing phonemic awareness activities that are practical for the classroom is key to success. YAP states that the objective of any phonemic awareness activity should be to facilitate children's ability to perceive that their speech is made up of a series of sounds. It is the breaking down and manipulation of speak, spoken language that is of, of interest. The lessons should focus on using and manipulating sounds. The types of phonemic awareness activities that can be incorporated into the classroom are sound matching activities, sound isolating activities, sound blending activities, sound addition or substitution activities, and segmentation activities. This, the strategies that I'm going to talk about mostly focus on sound isolating activities and having students signal out different sounds and different parts of the words. So for our first activity, it's about initial sounds. This activity will serve as a short-term practice activity for students because it will be practicing a skill that they need to know, but it will be using a read aloud book that we, will on we would only use in the class for a short period of time. So first, a read aloud will be conducted for the story if you give a mouse a cookie, and then 
the students would work with different words from that story. So to start the activity, the teacher would say a word and ask the students to tell them, to tell the, the class what sound they hear at the beginning of that word. After they tell the sound, the teacher would ask the student to tell what letter goes along with that sound so that they can work on their al alphabetic ref recognition when relating it back to the sounds. The class would probably work through about 10 to 15 words from the story quickly, and the teacher would want to make sure to point out that they are all working on initial sounds or beginning sounds. So the sound that happens at the beginning of the word. So this activity could be done with the whole class or in small groups, and it would probably be easier to assess individual students in small groups. But if you're trying to get an overall sense of the class's um, progress with initial with identifying initial sounds, you could probably just do a whole class lesson and check for understanding. The best practices that I will be mentioning after each of these strategies come from the Morrill and Gambrell book, and they are the 10 best practices for effective literacy instruction. So I have identified two best practices that can go along with this strategy. The first is the first best practice, which is implement practices that invite students to be active contributing members of a literacy community. All the students will be working together to complete this lesson and they're all actively contributing in identifying the initial sound. And then I have also identified best practice number 10, which is provide instruction in and practice with technologies that expand concepts and models of communication. I think that I did not, I didn't talk about using technology, but you could make this lesson easily accessible through technology by either playing the read aloud online and letting the students listen to it, or by playing the words online and having like the computer read the words out loud to the students so they can hear it from, from an outside voice. The second activity that I will be talking about, the second strategy focuses on first sounds as well. So this activity is called First Sound First and it allows students to work with beginning or initial sounds. This activity is a short-term activity because you would only do it until the students have grasped the idea of initial sounds and then you would move on to using a similar activity for ending or medial sounds. You would ask the students to listen to a set of words that all start with the same sound. And you would point out that they all start with the same sound and tell the students that they need to listen carefully to the set of words so that they can identify that beginning sound. After they have identified what the beginning sound is, you can ask the students to shout out or um, you can call on them and have them tell you more words that start with the same sound that you can add to that list that you just read. So this activity allows students to practice identifying the initial sounds and words, and then they are able to extend that knowledge further and add words to the list. This activity would be good as a whole class or a small group activity and could be assessed through the new words that students add to the list. If they all are correct and starting with the same initial sound, then the class has grasped that skill. I have identified three best practices from that book to go along with this strategy. The first is best practice number one, which is implement practices that invite students to be active contributing members of a literacy community. All of the students will be working together to create this list, whether it is whole group or small group, they're still being contributing members to the literacy community by working together and by putting in new words to add to that list. I've also identified best practice number two, um, which is understand that maintaining an engaged community requires the ongoing monitoring and adjustment of literacy practices. So after your students have mastered one beginning sound, you should be able to recognize that and move on to an, a new beginning sound or move on to identifying ending sounds that are the same. So as a teacher, you need to monitor the class's progress and make sure that you're changing it to fit with what their stu your students need. And then I also identified best practice number 10, which is about technology. And this would only apply to this strategy if you use a recording or a video to say the word sets. Or if you use um, technology to record your students' new answers. The third strategy I've identified is an activity called find your match. 
And this addresses all three of the strategies mentioned in my instructional goal. So all three, including the initial, medial, and ending sounds of words. This activity can be used as a long-term activity because it addresses multiple skills that students learn when working on their phonemic awareness. They are able to look for either the beginning sound, ending sound, rhyme, or even middle sounds, depending on the images you provide them to work with. First, you have to make picture cards using large index cards that relate to the skill that you want to focus on. And you wanna make sure that you have two of each picture that you're choosing. You punch holes at the top corner of the card and string yarn to make it into a necklace. You would then give one picture necklace to each student and have them find the other student with a picture whose beginning sound matches their own. So your picture cards don't have to be the same photo or the same picture, but they have to have the same beginning sound, at least one match for each sound. And once again, you can change this up depending on the skill that you're working on. So you could use photo, or use pictures that have the same beginning sound, ending sound, rhyme, same middle sound, any whatever skill you want your students to be working with. And you can use picture cards similar to the ones that I have here on this slide, or you can use ones that just have the image on them if you don't want the word on the, on the picture card. So this activity would be done with the whole class because they can be split up into pairs. They will have to find their match and the students can be assessed on whether or not they find their match and if they are able to explain why that is their match. So if you ask the students to find some, find the person with the same beginning sound as you and you have the card that says cat, you're looking for a person that has the card that starts with a C or a K sound. So when you find them, say it was a person with the clock like on this slide, you, you, you would want to ask the students that have those two cards why did you pair up? And you would be expecting them to say, because both of our pictures start with the k sound. The two best practices I've identified here are one and two. So implement practices that invite students to be active contributing members. They're working together in the literacy community of the classroom to find their matches and work with these initial sounds or ending sounds, whichever you choose. And two was to understand that an engaged community requires ongoing practice and monitoring. So as a teacher, you'll be editing the lesson to fit what your students need. And the final activity or strategy that I have identified is where is it? So this strategy will allow students to put together their knowledge of initial, medial, and ending sounds to directly meet the instructional goal associated with the long-term goal of this presentation. By having students work with all three, work, all three positions in a word, this strategy will, will need to be done as a long-term strategy because students would need the knowledge on all three sound positions before they can successfully complete this activity. This activity would probably be best done in small groups so that the teacher is most likely to see each student's answers. This activity helps students differentiate sound position in words. Each student should be given a counter and a sheet of paper where they have three boxes drawn, just like in the picture shown on this slide. You will explain to the students that you're going to say a list of words and they all contain the same sound, but some of them have that sound at the beginning, some have it in the middle, and some have it at the end. So you'll tell the students that if they hear the special sound at the beginning of the word, they should put that counter in the first box. If they hear the special sound in the middle, they put the counter in the middle box. And if they hear it at the end, they put the counter in the last box. This activity um, would be assessed best in small group time and it can be a quick uh, informal assessment where the teacher looks to see if the student is correctly placing their marker. And then if they see that the student has not, they can address it at that time. Something else that I want to note about this activity is that you need to make sure that you tell the students what sound they're listening for. So if you're going to give them like three words that have all have the, the sound b in it, you want to tell them that the special sound that they're listening for is b and they will put the counter where they hear that sound in the word. I have identified two best practices for this activity and both of them are in regards to small groups. So if the activity was done, in a small group, these best practices 
would apply. So I chose number four, which is provide students with small group differentiated instruction that reflects the complex nature of literacy. So by providing the students with this lesson in a small group, you are meeting that best practice. And then number eight is replace less relevant guided practice with more authentic inquiry-based options. So this is really getting the students hands-on in their learning and allowing them to see the different sounds and words by organizing it that way on the chart. And then finally, this is the references that I use to make this presentation. Um, I have the theory book, my best practices book, the two articles, and the phonics A to Z text that I used.